On first glance, you might have thought that this was made with a game engine, but no, this was created entirely with scratch blocks. And in this video, I'm going to show you my step-by-step -step process of how I coded this game, and give you some insight on how Scratch actually works. But first, let's take a step back. You've probably played, or at least have heard of, Plants vs. Zombies. It's one of the most popular mobile games to have ever existed. In this game, you place plants on your lawn to prevent zombies from going inside of your house. At the start of the game, you collect sun that falls from the sky. This allows you to place a sunflower, which then produces more sun, which then allows you to buy different types of plants and defend against the zombies. When I wanted to make this game in Scratch, I wanted to make everything. This means not only the coding part, but also the drawing and animation. I started by drawing a zombie, and I wanted it to have a walk animation. But this is where I ran into my first obstacle. You see, the zombie walk animation has a lot of individual frames, and I for sure did not want to draw every single one of those. This is just for a single zombie, too. There's tons of other zombies and plants with different animations that I would have to draw as well. So instead, I just had my single image of the zombie that I drew, and did a bit of a scratch hack. Scratch has this block called the fisheye effect, where it makes the sprite into a big chonker. Or in other words, it expands the center of the sprite while shrinking the outer edges. Now this effect happens on the center of the sprite. And I could change the center of the sprite by drawing a shape and making it invisible. So now the center of the zombie is different. Now when the fisheye effect is applied, because the center is moved to the head of the zombie, it then bobs up and down as if it's walking. Now that I had the hard part done, I added some code to make the zombie move, and now we had a basic zombie. Next up, it was time to create our first plant, the pea shooter. This is a pretty simple plant costing 100 sun that just shoots out peas. I drew up the pea shooter and added it to the game, and I used the same animation trick to make it look like it's shooting, and made it so that it shoots out a pea. Not too bad, if I say so myself. Next up, I did some simple sprite detection to make the zombie take damage from the pea. And now we actually have some interaction, though right now I wouldn't consider this gameplay, because the pea shooter is just there when the game starts, shooting the zombie. So I created a pea shooter icon and made it so that you can click on the icon to place down a pea shooter. I also made a grid on the map and did a bit of distance calculations so that the pea shooter snaps to the nearest grid position when it is placed. Then I made the zombies spawn in random lanes. And just like that, now we have some actual quality gameplay. Now that I had the pea shooter, it was time to make the sunflower. This plant costs 50 sun and is going to generate more sun, which we'll be able to use to purchase more plants. So I drew up the sunflower and used the same animation trick to make it bob up and down. Look at it, it's so happy and peaceful. I can also change the animation speed however I like, and now it looks like it had one too many red bulls. I then made it generate sun, and now the sunflower is complete. Then I made the sun click and added a sun counter, and we now have a way to buy our plants. Now that I had a few of the plants working, I had to fix one of the biggest and most complex problems in the game, the if touching block. You see, this block is great to use if you don't have a lot of sprites using it all at once. But once you have lots of sprites constantly checking the if touching block, the game starts to slow down by a lot. This is because it's more complicated to calculate if two sprites are touching or not, compared to, say, moving a sprite forward. So Scratch takes longer to run this block. This meant that if I wanted the game to run faster than 4 frames per second when there's tons of zombies, I had to come up with a workaround. And the workaround is lists. You see, lists run very fast as a block in Scratch because they're just used for storing information. And since the bullets and the zombies only go in one direction, that means that we can just store the X positions of the objects in a list and use those positions to detect if two objects are supposed to be touching each other. And if a bullet detects that it is touching a zombie, it tells the zombie to take damage. So now, no matter how many bullets and zombies we have on the screen, the game runs smoothly. Now that one of the hardest challenges was conquered, it was time to make our third plant, the Walnut. This plant costs 50 sun and has the ability to block zombies for a while. So I drew up the sprite with three different costumes representing how much health it has left, gave it some health, and oh, I didn't make the zombies stop to eat the walnut yet. As a matter of fact, the zombies don't stop to eat any of the plants right now. So of course, I had to add zombie eating to the game. I had to make sure to keep track of every single plant position in the list, and have the zombies 
just go through the list and check if it's close enough to a plant, then it stops moving and starts eating the plant. Once the zombie is eating a plant, it broadcasts a message to tell the plant to lose health. Then that plant loses health, and once it has no more health, it gets removed. Okay, so that was a mouthful, and it took a while to get everything working, but now the zombies can eat the walnut, as well as the other plants. Next up, I took a quick break from making plants, and added in the lawnmowers. These lawnmowers in Plants vs. Zombies serve as a last line of defense, which clears out a lane of zombies. However, once that lawnmower is used up, zombies can get into your house and eat your brains. I quickly drew up a lawnmower, then added them in, and made them go forward, just like that. I then made the zombies fall whenever they came into contact with a lawnmower. And now we have some working lawnmowers that can clear out entire lanes of zombies, which is pretty satisfying. Now it was time to move on to the explosive plants. The first one was the cherry bomb, which costs 150 sun, and when placed, explodes and makes zombies within an area all turn into dust. I drew up the cherry bomb and added the explosion effect in the game, which looked pretty similar to the original. Next up, I had to add the potato mine, which costs 25 sun, and when placed, takes a bit of time to activate, but once it pops up, it kills a zombie. I recreated it pretty similar to the original as well. I calculated whether or not a zombie gets exploded by a cherry bomb with a circle, making the cherry bomb destroy zombies in all directions. Meanwhile, I checked if a zombie gets destroyed by a potato mine by just checking if it's standing in front of it. The last two plants I created were the Repeater and the Snow Pea. The Repeater is what happens when you merge two normal pea shooters together. The Repeater costs 200 sun and, not surprisingly, shoots two peas at a time. The Snow Pea is what happens when you put a pea shooter into the freezer. It costs 175 sun and shoots frozen peas that damage and slow down zombies. Now that I had all of the plants added to the game, it was time to add different types of zombies. So far, I just had the normal zombies, but those really don't don't stand a chance against my army of peas. In Plants vs. Zombies, there's another type of zombie, the Conehead Zombie, which has more health than a normal zombie. So I went ahead and added the Conehead Zombie to the game. I also added the Buckethead Zombies, which have even more health, and now my pea shooters are starting to sweat a bit. But all the zombies still get destroyed by explosives, so that's fine. Now with all the zombies added, the last thing I had to add was levels. Right now, the zombies just spawn every 4 seconds, which makes it the most organized and boring zombie invasion ever. So I created some custom zombie spawn patterns, and also added in a progress bar and huge waves of zombies that appear in each level, just to make it more like the actual Plants vs. Zombies game. And now that I finished recreating the entire game, it was time for the moment of truth, the gameplay. Alright, so this is the game, Plants vs. Zombies, Scratch version. So let's try it out. Alright, we start the game, I'm gonna first place down a sunflower, just to get that early sun. Okay, I'll place down one more. And... I guess I'll place down one more. Oops, okay, there's the first zombie. Um, I do need some more sun to place down a pea shooter. So, there we are. Now I'll place down the pea shooter, and it's gonna start shooting. Awesome. Okay, here comes another zombie, so I gotta save up for another pea shooter. Alright, there we are. First zombie down, and we should be pretty good for now. Okay, here's another one. And we have this wave counter over here, so I think a big wave is coming. Uh, once it reaches the flag, we're gonna have a big wave. I'll place down one more sunflower. All right, huge. Okay, I have a ton of sun. Uh, let's see where the zombies spawn from this final wave, and then I'll place the plants accordingly. So, let's see. Alright, final wave. What do we have here? Oh, that's not bad. I'll place a repeater here. Um, and I'll just do a cherry bomb for fun. Nice. And last zombie. Cool. Now the level is completed, we can go on to the next level. Okay, this is level 2. So I'll start off with a normal sunflower. Place down another one. Okay, first zombie is here, so gotta place down a pea shooter. Okay, 
here it is. Nice. Yeah, I'll place one down. Okay. Nice. Another zombie in the same lane, so no need to place any more pea shooters right now. Place down another sunflower. I'll place down some more sunflowers, just because I can. Okay, this is a cone head. I'll place down a repeater here. That should be able to deal with it. Place down some more sunflowers, because why not? Okay, nice. Cone head is down. I have a ton of sun right now. Okay. I'll place down a snow pea for that. I'll also start building up my defenses, so I'll place down some walnuts. Okay. That should be able to deal with the cone head here. Okay, now we have a big wave, so we gotta be careful. There's a ton of zombies over here, so place down a repeater. Alright, so far so good. I've placed down no plants on the top lane, because no zombies have come up here, luckily. But that might change. Okay, I'll place down a repeater here. Another walnut, maybe up top. I'll place down some potato mines as well. Nice. And it seems like we are going to approach the final wave. Okay. Now there's zombies in the top lane, so I gotta place down some plants over there. Or I could just do a cherry bomb. Easy. Alright, next level. Level 3. Things might start to ramp up here, but we'll see. And I'll do something a bit different this time. I'll place down a potato mine to deal with this one. And I will just collect some more sun. This is going to help long term, where I'll be able to have more sun to defend against the other zombies. Alright, please appear. Come on. Okay, there we go. Nice. Just in time. Okay, we have a cone head already. Um, I'll place down a snow pea here, just to slow it down. I'll get some more sunflowers as well. Okay, another zombie. I'll do a potato mine to deal with that one. Okay, another zombie. I might save up for a repeater to deal with this one. Because I have so much sun. Okay, I need 25 more. There we go. Place down a repeater over here. And, okay, we have zombies in two lanes. How am I going to deal with this? Um, I'll place down a walnut to block this one first. And then I'll place down a pea shooter on this one. And hopefully I can save up for a pea shooter to deal with the cone head over here. Come on. Oh, and we have a bucket head on the top lane, so I'm going to place down a potato mine all the way over here, just to deal with it. That should be pretty good. My walnut is about to be eaten, okay. It got eight, but that is okay. Um, place down a repeater here to deal with the cone head. Oh, and this plant, okay, killed the zombie just in time. So we are safe for now, and we are at the final wave, so. A lot of zombies. Though I could just deal with them with a cherry bomb. Oh, and we have more zombies, so. And there we go. Level 3 complete. Now on to level 4, so let's see how hard this level is. And okay, there is a cone head already. I'll do a potato mine to deal with that one. I'll start building up my walnut defense, so. Place down one here. Okay, we got a normal zombie. Deal with that. I will build up more walnuts as defense. Not too bad, we survived. Okay, we have a huge wave incoming with a lot of zombies. So I'll place down a repeater here. Okay, got a couple. 
of zombies in this area. Gotta save up for maybe a snow pea or something. Alright, we have a lot of zombies now. Gotta be careful. Oh no, this zombie is gonna come over. I'll do a walnut to block. And we have a bucket head to deal with. So I might have to put a potato mine here and just hope that it activates in time. Okay, we're barely hanging on here. It's getting a bit tough. But I don't think we're going to use any of our lawn mowers, so should be okay for now. All right, place a snow pea on the top here. That repeater should be able to deal with everything. And we're at the final wave. Okay, um, let's see here. I'll do a walnut to block on the bottom lane. Okay, got to add something on the fourth lane over here. Because right now it is completely empty. I'll do a repeater. There we go. And not too bad for the final wave of level 4. Um, so if that's it, I'll just do a cherry bomb to finish it off. And there we go. But yeah, those were the first four levels of the game. But anyways, that was my process of making Plants vs. Zombies in Scratch. This was definitely not an easy journey, but I managed to complete it. If you want to check out my game, the link is in the description below. And be sure to like this video and subscribe too if you haven't already. Anyways, that's it for this video. See ya!